Hello guys, welcome to another Kamikaze creation video. It's been a bit of a slow week in the shed uh, after my uh, troubles with that uh, cooling system. Uh, I jumped online and ordered a few parts. Uh, because I've got that snout bracket, I've actually ordered two of the uh, lower thermostat housing gaskets. And uh, thank you to all of the or oh, for all the suggestions uh, about different types of uh, gasket compounds and things that have worked. Obviously, obviously, it has been an issue for others as well. Um, it's been a frustrating thing. I've never had uh, really that issue before. Uh, but sometimes these things are sent to slow us down and make us concentrate in different areas. And I have been. I've um, really sort of made some inroads into understanding the ECU and understanding the fuel map. Uh, and, uh, you know, from v videos that I've been watching have sort of said steer away from the timing map. Uh, that's really left for professionals. Um, but I've worked out different things like uh, Lambda, which I read a bit about before, but uh, um, Lambda is very different to uh, AFR, and I've got the software actually reading in Lambda off my wideband O2 sensor, and I've got um, my, fuel, my air fuel ratio gauge in the dash. It reads AFR, which is 14.7 for pump gas. So it's been good having the two. Um, uh, initially, I thought that things weren't reading right. I thought things weren't working right. And uh, Shane actually sent me a uh, translation file for the Spartan O2 sensor that I'm running in this car, which I loaded into the software. And it's set, uh, it was reading before about 20, which I just didn't seem was right. And when I loaded that transla translation file, the reading changed down to in the points, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.71, things like that. And I didn't understand why. And now I do because it's in Lambda. And a value of 1 is basically a 14.7 air fuel ratio based on the setup I've got in here. Anyway, I've also got a new exhaust on, which is awesome. And I'll show you that exhaust. Uh, we'll have a bit of a look inside the car at the AFR gauge and a bit of a look at the software and where I've been working. And uh, hopefully I receive those gaskets and new upper thermostat housing very soon and I can seal her up and put her back together. But anyway, we'll have a look at what I'm doing. Just thought I'd show you the exhaust system. I took it down the street um, the other day, dropped it off at the exhaust place and uh, got in to put a two and a half inch system. So he's joined into the extractors just there and he's done some nice little work here on uh, bringing it around the cross member and getting it up hidden. Uh, and up in here I've got a, uh, I think it's a 100 cell catalytic converter making it nice and legal because theoretically I do have to put this car over um, an emissions test down in Sydney and he's run that two and a half inch then into a I think it's a straight through oh no it looks offset uh, muffler um, again all two and a half inch right the way through and then it runs up over the diff but it sounds nice and it looks pretty good under the car and it's tucked in really nice and well sits out the back a little bit far but she's uh she's not a bad unit i'm pretty happy with the end result wideband sensor in this car to work with the ECU and help with the tune. 
Um, this is the gauge that came with it, which is reading in air fuel ratio. And for pump gas, as most people probably know, about 14.7 is a good reading. Um, for the air fuel ratio, um, mainly at idle and cruise, it can drop down a little bit apparently um, under power. And if you want to make a bit more power, you can come down to around the 12s. Um, which I believe is overfueling, so making it a bit richer um, because lean is bad. So um, I've had a bit of a trouble with that gauge. Uh, you can see over here I'm still fiddling with wiring, um, but I've got it all working now. Uh, and I've got the ECU software actually set up in Lambda, which reads it a little bit differently. So we'll have a look at that. So this is my base fuel map that's come with uh, the car and the ECU and it, it basically is a fuel map to start and run and I've been fiddling around with the tune analyzer and from my readings I get that it's reasonably rich I think um, this is set in lambda so uh, a value of 1 is equivalent to a 14.7 uh, air fuel ratio and this is well under at the moment <clears throat> or yeah well under so I think it's running quite rich uh, and uh, it isn't really starting and running real well I have been playing over here with a button uh, to run the analyzer and then applying changes but you really need to run it for a fair while and over and over, and over uh, to start to get some good data that the computer can analyze and it will actually update the uh, fuel table uh, based on uh, in here I have a um, in my fuel map I have a target air fuel ratio so basically it's saying a lambda of 1 uh, which is equivalent to an air fuel ratio of 14.7 and uh, that's at idle if we go up through it a little bit um, the figures do drop down so getting up to higher revs and higher load it actually makes it a bit richer so it's dropping those numbers uh, down from the 1. And you can see in there there's some 0.7s and 0.89s and things like that. So these are things that I've learnt so far. Um, a few YouTube uh, readings, understanding this software, uh, getting it to read in Lambda because my gauge down in here is actually reading in uh, AFR. And, uh, you know, it's sitting there at the moment after I've, I've done a little start and a run. It's sitting about 15, where 14.7 is optimal. So it's all learning uh, and having a bit of fun with it. Uh, the good thing I do know that everything is running not too bad and not causing any grief in the engine. The biggest issue is running lean. So guys, as you can see, there's been a fair bit of learning happening. Uh, I really wanted to understand a bit about that uh, air fuel ratio and a little bit about the tune before I just sent it away. And good news on that too. I've, uh, I was talking to uh, uh, someone locally uh, that I ran into today and he actually, um, his brother or brother-in-law has a dyno tune and uh, is only about an hour and or oh, hour and a half away from me so that's a possibility uh, but i've also made contact with a tuning shop over on the coast over near coffs harbour and uh, they did my ls1 ute put a um an otr on it over the radiator air intake and uh, cracked the ECU and uh, got about 50 more horses out of it. And a really nice uh, uh, nice company, family-run business, quite a big business and very professional. They actually race cars. So I sent him some pictures of this car and the uh, setup, 
and he seemed really excited to have a go. Loved the look of it, and I, I think sometimes in that sort of business, you just get sick of working on the same stuff all the time. He gets a lot of LS1, LS2, LS3 type stuff, uh, and he's very good at that. Um, but I think he'll be, uh, he has enough of an understanding of uh, those types of setups to adapt to this. So I think mid-February, like we're at the end of January now, so within the next couple of weeks, I'm looking like getting it over the coast and uh, getting it tuned. And it would be really exciting. I think I'm going to leave it with him uh, for a week because uh, you need to do that bass tune, get the tune right, uh, and then let it cool down. You need to do a bit of a cold tune from what I've been reading. Getting it to start when it's cold is an art as well. So I'll probably leave it with him for a week so we can do a bit of work on it and go back the next weekend and pick it up. And it'd be nice to think I could drive it home. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Loving this car, loving the technology, and uh, loving your comments. So take care, guys, and uh, keep watching, and I'll see you in the next video.